Which Arkham game had the best map design? So in each main Arkham game, Asylum, City, Origins, and Night, they all had a distinct map design that catered to what story they were talking about. Each map was extremely important to the game it was in, and it was honestly a huge plot point for the story, all very distinct from one another. But which map is arguably the best in terms of its design, and what fits best into the whole theme of the Arkham universe? What was the most memorable, basically? The answer is definitely opinionated, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a majority rule on what the general consensus is, and I'm also surprised nobody has done a video like this before, so allow me to take up the mantle. This video will talk about each map in each Arkham game, discussing what worked, what may not have worked, its tone, its detail, how effective it was, you get it. We'll just go in order of when each game came out, so Asylum first, then City, then Origins, then Night. And one more thing, I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays, and if you don't celebrate it, I hope you have a great rest of your year and wish nothing but the best for you. The one gift you guys can give me for Christmas is following my Twitter account. I want to get 1k before the end of next year, so if you guys can do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. That's my only gift I want this year, honestly. But yeah, appreciate it. Let's keep it pushing. Batman Arkham Asylum. It's hard not to gush about everything in this game, but this video is talking about the map design. Arkham Asylum is supposed to be this creepy, haunted-esque, dark, depressing facility that houses people that are deemed insane, which adds up to being a funhouse for all of Batman's villains. This game just took that concept and perfected it. When you think of Arkham Asylum, this is the Arkham Asylum you think of now. It's dark, creepy, so detailed. Every single building just seems like there's something off about it. The lack of colors, the atmosphere, it's all so well done here, and let's just try to break it down. One big thing about Arkham Asylum is the sense of isolation. When you're playing the game, it does feel like you're isolated, being stuck on this island filled with nothing but crazy people trying to kill you. There are NPCs, sure, but it doesn't really help the fact that you feel alone and stuck on this island with not much to help you out. You feel alone, and that feeling in a lot of games can feel uneasy. It's perfect for this kind of game because Arkham Asylum is meant to be that. This would not simply work in other superhero games with different settings like Central City or Metropolis. Arkham Asylum is one of the few that can invoke that, and it felt like Roxy took full advantage. The map felt isolated, it had that feeling. I also need to discuss that this game had an amazing metroidvania style to it. All the layouts of these places had good puzzles and hallways that make up for good level design. The layout itself is all just really interesting. Every building has some sort of secret or something creepy and dangerous about it. The deeper you go into these buildings, the more scary secrets you may find. Each area does a good build up of it, giving you that payoff saying to yourself, yeah, this place is creepy. The Arkham Mansion, the Botanical Gardens, the Medical Facility, they all just felt off, like as if they were haunted. The map layouts just really supported that. They all felt colorless, soulless, like these in-world designs have been the same since they were first built. And that's all a great thing for Arkham Asylum. Going through these narrow corridors and small areas helps to give Asylum the famous claustrophobic atmosphere it's known for. It's really interesting seeing the way these building interiors are designed. Even outside the buildings, the island itself, the sniper tower shown that they were once used by Arkham guards to stop inmates from escaping, or Dead Man's Point where they went to unalive themselves. This game really took full advantage of the atmosphere. I touched on it, kind of, but the map is also just filled with secrets that support the lore of the island as well. Finding Ratcatcher's gloves in the air vents showing that he used this area to escape off the island, it's just so cool to see. Shows where he once was and how he escaped. Seeing Zeus's old cell and what he left in there adds to the lore of Arkham Asylum. Or seeing the secret warden room to see what sinister plans he has was just amazing. Arkham was just filled with corruption and there's all these stories to support that. The audio tapes here felt so much more rewarding as well. Finding them throughout the map made it feel like you did this on your own accord and in doing so rewarded with further enhancing your opinion of Arkham Island, which is seeing it now as a downright evil setting. In a nutshell, Asylum's map captured that eerie, claustrophobic atmosphere perfectly that it's known for. The layout of the map itself is great too. You can tell they were going for that metroidvania puzzle-esque design, and I think they nailed it. The interiors of everywhere had that dull, old, haunted design, which is what Arkham is supposed to be, and they fleshed it all out with the audio tapes and Riddler secrets. I think the map for Asylum was great, the setting was just superb, and I think the one advantage this one has over the other Arkham games is that this map has it that bigger isn't always better. A smaller, more concise and focused map might be more memorable in the end. A 
Okay, next. Arguably the poster boy are the Arkham series. Patrick Bateman Arkham City. Now this game had a really unique idea for a map. Most superhero games set in cities are usually just that. I mean, big cities to explore with people around and all that, right? Which is great. But Arkham City was unique in its concept in that it's a giant super prison. An old part of Gotham City walled off with all the criminals just thrown in there. It's a really unique idea. It's one we haven't seen from a superhero game, at least to my knowledge. So already it has a great start and premise. As far as the atmosphere goes, I can't say it has that same top tier atmosphere that Asylum had, and it's not necessarily its fault. When you go bigger, and in particularly make something like a fully explorable city, it's hard to grasp onto that kind of concept. That being said, Arkham City is what every free roam city should strive to be. In my opinion, bigger isn't always better. While Arkham City is smaller than most fully explorable superhero maps, that is in no way a detriment. In fact, I think it might be a plus. Having a smaller city to explore means you latch onto things more. The Bowery, Industrial District, Park Row, Amusement Mile are all so distinctive from one another. The buildings, the museum, the courthouse, the church, the old JCPD building, Sionis Industries, these are unique landmarks in the game, all with interesting stories behind it. The museum, a place where you showcase old creations, houses one of the oldest to have ever been around, Solomon Grundy, the courthouse being used by Harvey Dent, a former man of the law. Not every building may have this unique idea of theming, but they are all still used to the best of its abilities. I can honestly say this is one of the superhero games where the landmarks are some of the most distinguishable from other superhero games, at least for me. In terms of its design, it just has that Arkham quality we're all known to expect. It's dark, it's gritty, the city is so detailed, it's just so cool seeing this old destroyed part of Gotham and nothing's wasted here. This bridge here being destroyed has a story behind it, the buildings all have stories behind it. The old toy factory right here went out of business after Batman stopped the corrupt owner. They made sure every area had a plethora of stories, nothing felt tacked on, and like I said, the dark and gritty factor is just a sprinkle on top. I mean, layout-wise, the map feels really good too. I never felt like the buildings were just copy and pasted to fill out that part of the city. It felt like making the actual map had a lot of thought and effort put into it. The interior of the buildings are pretty good too for the most part. Highlights for me were the museum and Sionis Industries, as I felt those had a lot of that metroidvania style that I enjoy. Some aren't winners, like the Toy Factory, it's just a big room to go talk to Bane and has a little area just designed to stop Bane. So while all the layouts aren't really winners, Overall, the interior designs were still great and put to good use. Some puzzles were challenging at first, making you think outside the box, which I really liked. On top of its solid design and great layout, the lore behind the city was something I think was better than Asylum's. The audio tapes here were a lot more engaging because it was something relevant to the story. Hugo Strange talking to each villain fleshed them out more, revealing to us things like how Two-Face can't live without his coin or that Hugo Strange wears a secret Batman costume showing his obsession. It's really interesting and it gives us a more up-to-date look on the villains which I think helps out map design because it makes you feel a little bit more attachment to them when you see the villains you learn more about occupying these areas. Little nuances like that you don't think affect the map design, I think do. Like the lore behind the city for me affects how much more quality the map actually has. It's not just layout and how each building is constructed, rather some type of emotional connection to each. Arkham City made that emotional connection I think probably the best out of every Arkham game. I just remember Arkham City the most for that and I love this game to death for it. But yes, summary for Arkham City, amazing map design, I think the layouts for everywhere were really well done. A couple of the interior buildings are kind of whatever I guess, but like most of them I said are great. Arkham City itself is sprawling with detail, atmosphere, grittiness, everything expected from a Batman setting. It's not lifeless either, everything has a story to it. It's great, great great layout, and it's from a timeless game. Seriously, I love this game. I'd marry it if you were a woman. Next up, we have Arkham Origins, what used to be the black sheep of the series I'd say, but now people are realizing how high quality and spectacular this game actually is. I think it has the best story of any Arkham game, but this video is about its map design, so how is the map design? Okay, so Arkham Origins, I think map design wise, is not terrible, but it didn't really have the same effect on me the others two did. I think this is a perfect example of bigger isn't always better. The map, while bigger than the previous Arkham games, felt like it just had to be. 
because when you think about it, this game was technically a filler game while we waited for Arkham Knight, so I don't want to bash on it too bad. But what the map really did effective was the Christmas theming. The theme of Christmas in Gotham was something I never really experienced in other media, so it was really unique and refreshing to see here. Especially when it's juxtaposed with the harsh reality of Gotham clashing with that cheerful spirit of the holidays. It did that really well in the map here, and I think the map theming around that was just overall played excellently. But the map itself, we gotta break down. First of all, they reused Arkham City in this game. I mean, kind of. I mean, they did, but it's before it's abandoned in a prison, so we see it when it's actually nice and being used by civilians. So it's cool to see that. But since we've already seen this area before, it takes away some of that wow and discovery factor, you know what I mean? It's cool to re-explore it in that context, and there are some new cool unique areas added, like the final offer ship for example, but it just loses some of that wow factor like I said. Here's a clip of me using a web shooter to get some Cheez-Its. As far as the new areas go, Pioneer Bridge, Coventry, Diamond District, and Burnley, they're all cool, but I feel like it was just bigger for the sake of being bigger at times. The buildings were huge compared to cities, and they were beautiful, but it just didn't feel as detailed. It wasn't as focused, I think, compared to Arkham City. It is fun to have a bigger city to explore, don't get me wrong, but it just wasn't as memorable to me as Arkham City was. It might be due to the whole idea of City and Asylum being these big prisons and whatnot, but yeah. However, I think the interiors of Arkham Origins locales were probably the best so far compared to City and Asylum, and honestly, probably Arkham Knight. Sneaking around through GCPD was really cool. I liked seeing a populated area filled with cops that you had to get around. Final Offer was really cool sneaking around that big ship as well. Gotham Merchants Bank was well done too. Even though it was smaller, they managed to get that creepy factor in there, especially when meeting Joker there. The hotel was just an amazing spectacle. These areas had top tier Metroidvania puzzle-esque challenges and rooms to get past that were on the quality of the Arkham games. I think they did an impeccable job here. It was really fun and I think more memorable than the other games honestly. I loved them a lot. The DLC too in particular was I think one of the best DLCs we've gotten in the Arkham games. Cold Cold Heart was a hefty story DLC that explored one of Batman's biggest villains, but the new areas to explore, enhancing the map design, Gothcorp was just really well done. The layout of Gothcorp was great, it was just more of what we loved and for that I gotta commend it. As far as lore goes for these maps and areas, they just weren't as strong compared to the other games for me. I mean there's audio tapes to give more depth to some characters, but something about it didn't resonate with me and giving me more emotional connections when meeting them on the map. I don't know why that is, but Arkham City's lore just latched onto me more. But they nonetheless do nothing but improve the game's quality, and I'm sure for other people, it helped to build that connection when going to these locales and meeting these characters. Overall though, I think Arkham Origins wasn't a bad map design at all, especially when incorporating the Metroidvania aspects, but at times, I felt it was lacking compared to the other Arkham games. A lot of what I remember were just flashy colors and snow in the overworld, a nice spectacle, but lacking in some areas the other Arkham games are known for, like that high level in detail. But still, a great game nonetheless, and the map deserves to be commended for, especially for that Metrovania style with the locales. Now, the final game, Batman Arkham Knight. The conclusion to the Arkham games, jaw-dropping graphics to the day, which I bring up because I think it helps with map design. Arkham Knight's map design, where do I begin? First of all, the three different areas, Bleak Island, Miyagani Island, and Founders Island. All very distinctive from one another. Bleak Island felt similar to Arkham City, smaller buildings more close to the ground while still keeping that expansive flair the game has. Miyagani Island, my personal favorite, a huge sprawling island filled with huge buildings and visual flair. This is what I kind of pictured Gotham when seeing it afar from Arkham City, kind of anyway. And then there's Founders Island, a city being built on top of an old area of Gotham, giving Gotham that new breath of fresh air. They all have certain distinctions and qualities from one another, and for that, I think they did a great job. I think the graphics truly do help in his map design, however. Everything just looks so beautiful, even today, to the point where you just stand atop a building and look at the detail. Just breathtaking. The rain hitting your suit looks so good. Good. Seeing these interactions like thugs playing around with the Batmobile gives a lot more life to Gotham here which is good because without civilians could feel lifeless at times. 
Each area of the game has distinct locales as well. GCPD for Bleak Island, you go there a lot. Wayne Tower on Miyagani Island, you don't visit it as much, but it's Wayne Tower, so it's already kind of a big thing. The airships on Founders Island, as well as its underground sections, there's just a lot here to the map that's memorable. Gotham itself, I want to touch on more because this feels like a true Gotham City. I mean, every Gotham across all media have their own unique touches and designs, but I think they did a really great, memorable job here. As far as interiors go, I think wasn't the best. Some areas like Panessa Studios, for example, was more like, you have three directions to go, go do all of them. It didn't really have that puzzle, Metrovania style that I particularly enjoy, not enough of anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were sections with that, like Stag Airships I think is a great example of it, but I just felt like it was lacking here in some parts compared to the first. And I think a big reason to that is that some of it's based around the Batmobile, which I think isn't as engaging. It's fun. Like, I do think it's fun, but just not as fun as being Batman. On the topic of the Batmobile, the city design was really catered to making sure it's a fun place to drive around in with the Batmobile, which is a great thing, because they also made it fun to just glide around with Batman as Batman, the best of both worlds. And the design needs to be commended for that. Despite what people think about the Batmobile, Rock City did a great job in designing the layout of the city to just be fun to drive around in, and making the buildings fun as well to just run across from. As far as details go, I touched on it a bit, but Gotham did not go to waste here. Every single street, I feel, has some sort of reference, some sort of easter egg, some sort of detail that gives it that bit of uniqueness. Even outside of that, it's just uh, details like how things break when the Batmobile hits them, how this ground here breaks when you place explosive gel. There's details about this map I guarantee you don't know about to this day. It's insane how interactive the map design is here, the best we've seen it out of the Arkham games. Lore-wise, the game did an excellent job creating the emotional impact with the city. It gets downright creepy at times. Discovering the Solomon Grundy area with the little girl singing its tune, just creepy. Or the old lighthouse where you find a bunch of skeletons, finding out Croc was once here, boom, creepy, fleshed out story already established right there. The game does that like everywhere, giving the map life and lore behind it. It's not empty, it's just excellent. And I didn't even talk about the DLC. Adding more interesting locales like the hospital or the crashed airship, Batgirl's matter of family DLC with the carnival is just downright excellent map design. It's so well done, it's creepy, variety filled, has its own interesting story behind it. It's done perfectly in my opinion. The game really had a great tone behind it and incredible detail to the map that's just unmatched. The map layout was just really done as well overall. Some interiors I think maybe weren't as good as other Arkham games but they have some merit to it. Overall, I think Arkham Knight's map, this big fat map we play in, is really well done. And I'm glad they went with the direction they did while having three separate islands. Okay, so with all that being said, which Arkham game had the best map design? They all have cool design choices in their own ways, but ultimately, I think the best map is Batman Arkham VR, because you really feel like Batman, just kidding, I think it's without a doubt Batman Arkham Asylum. Batman Arkham Asylum had an excellent map design perfect perfect example that bigger doesn't always mean better like i said like i don't know 15 minutes ago arkham asylum had so much going for it and there's a reason it's known as a game with a claustrophobic atmosphere the feeling of isolation being on a small island full of crazy people trying to kill you the dark and hopeless feeling of this place never being able to help its inmates the horror-stricken stories echoing in each nook and cranny the great metroidvania puzzle-esque map design. There's just something about this game's atmosphere and map layout that sets it apart from other Arkham games. It's just super cool to look at, and I think it's due to it not being a big city. It's a very focused, central location. Everywhere you go, there's danger looming. Everywhere you explore has the potential to make you feel uneasy. The lack of coloring, the lore, the huge ass moon you can see. I mean, look how big this moon is. Have you ever noticed that? It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. This game does feel as if you're on a whole new planet, separate from reality. The map design fully encompasses all of that. I think Arkham Asylum had the best map design, but that's just my opinion. What do you think has the best map design? Because personally, while I do think Asylum has the best map design, my personal favorite is actually Arkham City. Just because I like to explore more and I like the free roam aspect that game really had, but I do think that Asylum is arguably the best map design with how everything is constructed. But like I said, you tell me what's your favorite. 
And as always, I really appreciate any support for the video, and I'll see you on the next video. Follow me on Twitter, please. I'm kind of funny. Look at my likes. Uh, I like a lot of memes. It'll probably make you laugh. I don't know. But as always, stay safe and uh, peace.